Hello and welcome to the third tutorial in the Cocos 2D JS version 3 series. In this part we're going to be showing you how to set up for Android on a Mac. If you are on Windows, don't worry, the next tutorial will cover that. To set up for Android on, on a Mac, we need to download a few items. The first of all is Cocos 2D JS. You can get that from cocos2d-x.org. The link will be in the description, so don't worry. Actually, the link for everything will be in the description. And um, you want version 3. Once you have that, you're going to want NDK R9D. The R9D isn't available anymore because they're often they're on R10B. Yes, and R9D is the only one that works with your R10, doesn't even work with Cocos 2D Excel and Cocos 2D JS. And Cocos 2D JS has Cocos 2D X built in. So well, we will provide you a separate link. It's Androids.zone. Basically, don't try and remember the link, there's no point because there will be a link in the description. And from here, you can get Android NDK R9D, whichever version you're on. Obviously, because we're on Mac, we have the Mac OS X 64 bit. If you need the 32 bit, you can get the 32 bit and so forth. The next thing you're going to, you're going to want is ADT, which is the Android development tools. So if you just go to ADT plugin. You want to click on the download link and then you want to download this Eclipse ADT. There will be a link for this in the description as well. And the final thing you want is Apache and. And if you just go to the Apache and website, go to binary distribution and then download one of these archives, whichever one you want. Uh, for simplicity, I always download the zip one. And once you have all of these downloaded, what you're going to want to do is extract all of them. I've already extracted them to save time. I put them in a folder called development in my applications directory simply because it helps organize it better and it'll help uh, squash any problem that we have later in development due to stuff being all over the place. So in Android, we have our ADT, our NDK, and our Apache Anta have been extracted and in our Cocos 2D JS we have it extracted as well. So what we need to do is open up terminal and within terminal we need to change directory to the Cocos 2D JS folder which is this one here that contains all of these files. And now what we need to do is run the Python command for setup.py. So do to do that you do Python dot forward slash setup dot py click enter and now we check for the cocos console root wasn't found so we've added it it's asking for the ndk root and for that we just go to wherever your ndk folder is drag and drop this folder onto it make sure there is no space at the end by default it does add if you drag and drop it click enter also make sure there are no spaces in the directory path as well because that causes issues as well so there's just a little tip then it wants the Android SDK. So for the SDK, you don't drag the ADT folder, you drag the SDK folder within the ADT folder. Again, get rid of spaces. Finally, it wants the AND root, and for that, you go to Apache AND, then you drag and drop the bin folder within that. Again, make sure there are no spaces at the end. Click Enter. And now it just wants us to save the environment variables. To do that, we just type in this command. And this command will vary depending on your system because chances are your username isn't someone our systems. So we're going to put source, forward slash users, forward slash someone our systems, forward slash dot bash underscore profile. And what I like to do is run the setup command again because this helps verify that the environment variables have been added. Because if I set it up, if you have a look, it skipped over all the checks for the Cocos console root saying it's found, NDK root is found, Android SDK root is found, and Android root is found. We don't need to run this command again. It's just we just run the setup command to make sure everything was saved correctly. Now what we can do is generate a new project using the command in terminal using the Cocos command. We can do this from wherever we want. We don't have to have our directory as Cocos 2D JS. To use the Cocos command, you use the word Cocos, then the keyword new. You put your project name after that and put tutorial CC JS Android. Then you put dash P and now you put your package name. I'm going to put sonar dot Android JS. Put dash L and you put language is JS. That's the only one the Cocos 2G JS supports. 
dash d forward slash users and the dash d command is where you want your project to be generated. I'm going to have it generated on my desktop. Uh, forward slash desktop, click enter and now it's just generating this project. Okay, so if we just, actually we're still going to need this. So if we just, uh, we can close down the web browser and we have a project right here generated, that one there. And what we're going to want to do is change directory to our project's root directory, aka this one. Drag and drop that onto it. And now what we want to do is compile uh, the project. So to compile it, you do the COCOS, compile, dash P, and dash P specifies what platform you want to compile it for. Uh, we're going to put Android. Click enter, and now it's just going to compile our project and COCOS 2DJS. Well, this project is going to take a minute or two. Once it has compiled, we're going to run our project using the same command as the compile, but we'll use the keyword run instead of compile. So just wait for this to successfully complete and compile our project. So I'll let you know what we're going to do after we've run our project. We're just going to quickly go over what is in this folder here so we know what we're dealing with and you know what you need to be concerned about because a lot of it is general Cocos 2D stuff that you don't need to worry about. Hence why you use an engine because it abstracts a lot of stuff for you, especially a cross-platform engine. You can just write code and you know it will work on different platforms. It will do the underlying stuff for you. It's taking a little while to compile, but that's just the way it is. If you get these warnings, don't matter, it's fine. As long as the compilation is successful, that is the main thing. And a lot of the warnings are Cocos related, so we can just ignore them. Come on, any minute now, hopefully, it finishes compiling. Okay, build is successful, I say there. Total time, seven seconds. Oh, I'm guessing that was the build at the end like the entire thing was not seven seconds and you can get your APK from your project directory run try blah, 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 run time I mean runtime Android so we can see it right here the runtime Android and there we have our APK but we're gonna run it and to run it we're gonna do cocos run dash p and then we're gonna specify our platform which is Android what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna record my Android device so you can see it running we're going to click enter first. I will hit record on my phone soon. Just don't want you to have to just watch for the sake of watching. Failure. And actually ignore that. It, there we go. As you can see, we just have our project now running. That is it. That's how you set up for Android on a Mac for Cocos 2D JS. Now let's go over what we have in our project. So we have our res folder. Within this, we put our resources, so our images, audio, etc., anything else that we need. We have our source folder, and this contains our JavaScript files. The app.js is basically what you saw running this is that layer we'll be covering this more in depth over the next few tutorials and up and generally throughout this series the resource.js is where you can put your resource you don't have to you can explicitly just use the file path but this way you can just wherever you want just use this keyword and you can access that image which I or that resource which I think is really really cool and then for the main.js, you're generally not going to be interacting with this. Maybe a few things at the start to set the design resolution, set the resolution policies. But like I said, for the most part, 
this will be just interacted with at the start and throughout you'll be interacting with the files within source all the other stuff you don't really need to worry about obviously in runtime we've got our apk if you just want the apk file itself and a little thing to know when using the run command it compiles the project as well so you could just do both steps in one command but the compile command could be useful if you are developing and you want to see if there are any compilation errors but don't want to run the application yet. Another thing to note is that you can't run Cocos 2DX and Cocos 2DJS simultaneously. What we mean by that is you, you can run you can have two applications generated, two games, and you can compile them, you can run them, that's A-OK. -okay. But the issue occurs is when you use the Cocos command, aka in the terminal, you can't use the Cocos command for Cocos 2DX and Cocos 2DJS. It's one or the other. At the, at the moment, as far as we're aware, that's how it is. We reached out to Chu Kong um, regarding Cocos 2DX. Hopefully they can shed some light on this and perhaps there is a way or perhaps we haven't set it up properly or perhaps there's a few extra steps that you have to go through so you can have Cocos 2DX and Cocos 2DJS at the same time. But it's not too much of an issue, you just need to run the setup.py command again for whichever one you want to use. That's it for this tutorial. In the next part of this series, we're going to be looking at setting up for Android on Windows. The source code that we produced in this tutorial will be in the description via a link. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day and a great weekend or whatever is left of your weekend. Bye.